Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Well, it's another week. Friday Night Flies, self-isolation. We're down here in the vault of the Pemberton Fish Finder and uh, Friday Night Flies headquarter. It's become my... Uh, isolation man den or man cave whatever you want to call it but uh i'm just checking the audio it looks like we've got a few viewers already and uh i'm just gonna turn this off and like uh, last week i'm gonna be responding to your guys's comments and questions later because i'm a one-man wrecking crew today um as you can see we've been tying a lot of flies today in the last couple days i'll just show you guys a couple trade secrets i don't know if you guys can see that clear or not but uh making some big bucktails that's what we were tying last week and of course being that the still water season is right around the corner and just recently i guess it was yesterday uh the provincial government british columbia uh gave us the uh, go ahead to start fishing again and uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Um, pretty exciting stuff. We had a, we've got a huge contest going on right now with Friday Night Flies. And there's, we're gonna give you guys a few more minutes here to get in and tie your thing. And then I'm gonna announce another contest that we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna try our best to keep it current. But uh, as you guys are well aware, and ladies, um, we've got a few sponsors for the show this week or for the show in general. But one of the uh, one of our, our great uh, sponsors has been Solarez, and if you guys can see that, you know what that is. This is going to be our prize for next week, and I don't know what these guys retail for. I've never paid for one, being that uh, we work with Solarez, and Solarez has been really gracious. Uh, I mean, this is I've had this is the same one, but they're not as fancy. It doesn't have the purple top on it, but uh, I've had mine for two years. They come with the charging system, and it really cures your UV so, uh, UV resins quick. So I think these guys retail for around 100 bucks, pretty close to it anyhow, between 80 and 100 bucks. So that's going to be a huge prize. Um, we'll announce that a little bit later. But uh, another thing before we get to tying is uh, the fishing. The fishing has really really picked up in, in the local streams and lakes, uh, lakes in Pemberton and Whistler and Squamish are now free of ice. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting out there and doing a little still water fishing. Uh, the streams are full of cutthroat right now and there's uh, quite a few steelhead around too. So um, we're gonna announce that a little bit later on Pemberton Fish Finder. But tonight I've been, I, I guess you guys can see down in the bottom here, I've got uh, an old, go-to pattern that's put a lot of fish on my float tube or my v-boat and that is the f and f mayfly nymph honestly i don't know why we called it the mayfly nymph in the first place but uh it was kind of one of those things we didn't have a name for and it was like yeah hey, let's call it the mayfly nymph but it's it's uh like i said in the description this pattern has uh is a is a locator pattern 
Um, it's very difficult to fish incorrectly. Um, I've caught fish on dry lines with it. I've caught fish with sink tips. I've caught them on full sinking lines. I've caught it while I've had my head turned looking at the scenery and just letting it sink. I've caught fish. I've caught fish on those strips, trolling it. Anyhow, what I'm trying to say is that this pattern is absolutely deadly. And anyone that's fished it, highly recommends it too. So if you haven't got this pattern in your fly box and you're fishing the Sea to Sky Corridor or anywhere in British Columbia, I fished it all over BC and it, it, uh, it absolutely destroys them. So anyhow, without further ado, let's get, uh, let's get tying this beautiful pattern. Like I said, I'm a one man wrecking crew today. Um, everybody's in isolation, but I have got word that we're going to try maybe this evening to do, uh, a live stream through messenger with maybe some of our other fellow tires out there and uh, if you if you guys would like or would are interested in being in, involved in that uh, send us a little private message on Friday Night Flies Facebook or on Instagram uh, one thing you're gonna need is a good internet connection and a good camera so <laughs> and probably a good laptop uh, we don't want to have pixelated uh, pixelated video obviously and uh probably should be okay at fly times here so we're not gonna be giving out lessons live uh might be down the road but anyhow let's carry on with the show so the bead that i'm using today is one size bigger than i probably would use traditionally um and it is the metallic red let me see if i can fly them. my uh fly time bench is in disarray right now being that uh, I've been tying a whole ton of different patterns but I believe this size is the quarter or large and of course whenever you go to grab it I've got everything set up ready to go oh there we go so the beat that I'm using is a 3 16 um, I would probably go to a medium bead and you can see that these guys are very big in comparison and that's a, a size 10 Daiichi um, I typically would tie this on a mustad and I've got I've got tons of the mustad hooks that I use um, it's just that I'm having difficulty getting this bigger bead that I and I mean it's not easy to just go out and buy, buy uh, beads right now so I typically tie it on this hook right here, the C53S, in a long curved in a size 10. That's the, the hook you want to use. Uh, nothing wrong with the Daiichi. The Daiichi is good. Um, the only difference really is the, the curve of the hook right down near the barb is a little bit sharper on the mustad and it's a little bit more rounded with the Daiichi plus the hook itself is a little softer so you can actually wrap it around that hook a little bit easier but uh, like I said earlier this is the hook of choice it's a better hook anyhow so we'll give this one a slow roll so the original this is a variation of the original uh, what I did is instead of using um, pheasant tail for the tail I've just gone and used mallard flank in the wood duck. I've also tied this one in the natural, which looks pretty fishy too. And I'll just show you what that one looks like quickly. Uh, I'm gonna, I haven't fished the natural, but uh, I know that the wood duck coloring is absolutely dynamite. So I'm gonna try this one just to see if it's, if it even comes close to that uh, wood duck because I am running low on the wood duck and I you got to continue to tie these go-to flies because the season is upon us and it's going to be happening here pretty soon so anyhow let's get uh, to tying this beauty so like we said size 10 curved caddis hook take that uh, metallic red bead slip it up over the hook and plant her in a vise so today what we're using for thread what we're using for thread today is ultra thread 
140 in olive. So you guys are having troubles hearing me. There it is. And we're going to just throw some thread on the hook a little bit. I just usually throw a little bit in behind that bead so it can't really wander too far up. So I just throw a little bit in there. And then cover the shank. You want to, we're going to be throwing a dubbing loop on this fly. So you want something for it to kind of grip to when you're throwing that down. Cut the end off. So we're doing it in the wood duck color. So there's one feather. We'll get a couple. See, I really like using mallard flank for moto minnows and the moto minnow typically you're tying with the bigger feathers and uh, it's funny because i was looking through all my boxes or bags of feathers and all i was left with was a bunch of these tiny little feathers that weren't really good for much uh, and that was kind of one of the reasons that I started looking to see if there was a pattern we could develop that uh, that we could use a lot of this stuff up so that we weren't throwing it out. So there was a little lake that we were fishing in Pemberton that was absolutely loaded with a bunch of beautiful triploids and I mean it's still fully loaded. And uh, we just got busy, me and Scott Leboldus, aka Love the Tug, on Instagram if you guys want to give him a follow. He's a, he's a pretty fishy guy too. But uh, anyhow, we got together and we just started developing and kind of working on different things. And we came up with this pattern, it's pretty fishy, using what are scraps from tying moto minnows from the... Uh, the spring and the fall, we use them for salmon, we use them for steelhead, we use them for everything. The moto minnow is a, a dynamite pattern for a streamer. And I think I'll tie another one of them here soon too. It's been a while, but uh, what you want to do is get that tail on there. But so we had all this leftover mallard plank that's really not good for anything other than these mayfly nymphs, and man, they sure smoke them. So now that you got that little tail. Just going to kind of level it out a little bit so that it doesn't look clumpy in the back and thin in the front. Okay, so now what we're going to do is throw a little dubbing loop in at the tail, wrap it around, lock it down, like we always say here, Friday Night Flies. I'm going to throw my dubbing hook into the loop, let it sit for two seconds, and Throw a quick whip finish at the head here, and we're going to rest this bobbin on the carrier bobbin cradle. So, the choice of dubbing, I get it by the one ounce bags. They're, when you tie as much as we do, you get the goods. This one, I believe, is called uh, Peacock dynamite color. It's got a little bit of gold hues. It's got some olive and some, ah, I don't even know. It's, it's just a good mix of diamond dub, dynamite stuff. So anyhow, what, what you want to do is just kind of fluff it up. If you guys are tying dubbing loops, you don't need a ton because it's not a real big hook. Spread it out a little bit and get this all inside that dubbing loop. Once it's in there, we'll get to work and spread it out a little bit, make it a little bit more even. Last thing you want is to make a big clumpy fly, or a small clumpy fly, especially in this. So it's pretty even all the way through. I don't know if you can see that or not, but as soon as you put the spin to this stuff, it gets really nice and uniform. So I'm gonna make sure everything stays uniform. Dead sexy. If you guys are hitting me up with some questions. Like I said, it's uh, we're a one-man wrecking crew tonight again. 
So I'll answer you guys' questions and comments a little bit later. Um, I'm thinking that I might throw down another big nymph and then describe what the next contest will entitle. So anyhow, we're going to just take this dubbing loop and work it up behind the bead. Give it a couple extra just to hold that bead into place. Work your thread off the bobbin cradle here. And we're just going to lock it down in behind, in behind the bead. Cut off the excess of your dubbing loop. Pull this back. And all we're going to do is just lock this guy down a little bit. Nice and pretty in behind that bead. Right there, like that. If you guys don't have a Velcro strip, now's the time to go make one. Pretty easy. You're gonna pick a little bit of that stuff out, make it look pretty buggy, just like so. And then we're gonna find ourselves another beautiful piece of that short mallard flank. So this stuff, when it lays out, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I've got a halfle gauge here. I'm just going to give it an IV. Uh, this one bends out at about a size 4 hook. So if you guys don't know what a hook gauge is or a feather gauge, Google it. There's a, it's called a hook hackle gauge. So on the hook hackle gauge, this one fans out at about a size 4 hook. Okay? So if that makes sense to some people, might not to others. But uh, if you Google it, you should probably have a hook hackle gauge, especially when it comes to tying dry flies. <laughs> it's going to come in pretty handy for you. Okay, so all I'm doing is just working the tip out and folding the feathers back. Lay this guy right up in tight behind the bead and lock it into place. Right in tight. Lock it into place. Don't worry about throwing away all this extra little tip, it's gonna be a good part of it. Um, the hook, the hackle pliers that I've got, I've got a pair of these guys and they drive me absolutely bonkers. And the ones that I that I prefer are actually at the shop, sitting on the bench and I haven't been there in a while. So what I have been doing lately has been using my forceps. And they seem to work pretty good. I've got some small ones that I use for chronomid fishing. And anybody that chronomids fishes would be like, well, what are you using that for? Um, you take your small forceps and you put it onto your, your chronomid and send it to the bottom and that'll help you get your depth set right. Little tricks. And uh, I found that one out when I was fishing one of the interior lakes. An old guy came over. He's like, son, looks like you could use some tips. I said, yep. I would gladly take tips from you, my man. Especially after I sat there and watched him absolutely destroy this lake in front of quite a few people. So I was more than willing to take directions from this elder. So, anyhow, what we're doing now is just locking down that feather, the stem right in behind. It's looking pretty bushy at this moment, but you're going to see it transform here real quick. So. All you're going to do is pull this guy back. Once it's locked into place, you can actually take your Velcro again and just give it a little grooming back. And take all this back with your fingers. And you're going to take your bobbin. And you just want to make sure that you got that guy locked down real nice. Okay, just like so. And now you can see I've got a little bit of thread on the top of the bead. You don't want to throw all that thread up there and make it look goofy. So, to clean that up, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is go back into your dubbing bag, pull a little bit of dubbing out. That's an old school trick. Take it, twist it onto your thread, just like so. Go a couple rounds right in behind that bead. Pull it all nice and tight. Nice and tight, just like I'm doing. Get your whip finishing tool out. Well, you've still got a little bit of that dubbing in there. Get right tight in behind that bead. It helps sometimes to stick your tongue out while you're doing it. 
and get that thing right tight. Make sure that bead's secure. You don't want it clunking around, moving around. Make sure your rotary section's on nice and tight and get in there tight and clip it off. So that's pretty well done, but you want it to look sexy. So we get in there and just brush a little bit of that dubbing out. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. When that thing is in the water, next level. It's next level fly right there. So that is a variation of the F and F Mayfly Nymph. Deadly, absolutely deadly. Put it in your box, fish it. You can't fish it wrong, but you'll you'll notice that once you start trying a few different techniques, it'll work. Certain ways will work a whole lot better. Um, and like we said earlier, we're going to announce the winner here and the new contest rules here very shortly. So I'm going to get my bench rearranged, make sure that the fly is all focused for the next show. And we'll be right back with you and we will announce the winner. So you've got about five minutes to get those likes in there quick. Like, anyhow, we'll check right back in with you shortly here.